Hello guys, in this video we will be discussing about the static Trebius, okay, Trebius drive. So in this drive, you can see the drive circuit over here. This is important. From this, we will understand all the things. So exam point of view, just note it down one point by point what all things you have to write. So first point comes here is nothing but so what speed control it can do. So slipping induction motor or the wound rotor motor for the below synchronous speed we can go for this drive below synchronous speed this is the first and foremost point you have to write second point now what will happen so let us try to understand this diagram carefully you have to see this diagram okay now here what happens is that this you can see two circles right so inner circle will be the rotor part outer circle will be the stator part okay now this rotor part from this you can see it is taken from rotor side it is taken so what it is taken a portion of rotor ac power is taken okay so second point comes a portion of rotor ac power well, what they will do that is basically converted is converted to DC by the diode bridge now where is that diode bridge here so you can observe here this part so when you see this part you can observe that from this I am taking the portion of rotor AC power then I am taking to the diode bridge so what it will do diode bridge it will convert the AC power into the DC so it is D in D it is converted to DC so by using what diode bridge all the diodes you can see over here okay now next this is the second point third point after conversion what will do after converting it to dc now we are going to use as what one one rectify we are going to use okay so here you can see the controlled rectifier controlled rectifier so this control rectifier is basically working as this is working as what inverter now this inverter it is working as inverter so what inverter will do inverter will basically convert the dc to ac not rectifier see control rectifier is working as what the inverter so this portion is nothing but we are using the uh, the inverter side inverter portion inverter so this control rectifier is basically working as inverter this will convert whatever we got dc into ac so it will convert into what ac now after so working as inverter converts dc to ac the fourth part is nothing but see where where should i take this ac then ac is then taken back to the the power supply itself yes three phase ac supply is there so it is again fed back there so we can write it as after conversion into ac by the inverter and again it it, it is fed back fed back this ac is fed back to the ac source this is the fourth point coming to the fifth point whatever the power is fed we have fed the power rest yes. We have reached here this portion power is fed this whatever the power we are feeding there we call it as what pr this is nothing but power fed back okay pr which is nothing but power fed back so how can i control this so this power fed back can be controlled by just me remove this part see controlled by this vd2 okay so this is nothing but the inverter inverter counter emf okay so this pr which is the power fed back can be controlled can be controlled by by vd2 so you can observe here vd2 now here what will happen basically we are controlling what the can be controlled by what vd2 which is nothing but you can specify here in vd2 is nothing but the inverter counter emf okay 
that also you can specify let me go to the sixth point now this vd2 in order to control vd2 which is nothing but the inverter counter emf this vd2 can be controlled by inverter firing angle at which angle we have to fire the thyristors which are used over here right so inverter firing angle so vd2 can be controlled by inverter firing angle so this thing you you have to understand this is the sixth point so what it is nothing but see we are taking pr pr is the power fed back to the ac supply this can be controlled by what vd2 and vd2 can be controlled by what the firing angle okay firing angle of this uh, thyristors inverter firing angle this we can control okay so next point you have to understand here it is nothing but see we are using uh, in this one if you see we are using one ld so carefully you have to understand here we are using one ld so this ld is nothing but dc link inductor so seventh point comes dc link inductor which is nothing but the ld this ld can be used to reduce the ripple now this po this part is used to reduce the ripple in dc link current which is id okay so what are the fluctuation is there in id for in order to reduce that ripple whatever the ripple is there in order to reduce that we are using this ld so basically you have to tell the function of ld why we are using it there okay and this drive basically has a higher efficiency so why it has higher efficiency let me just that will be the eighth point okay let me just write that thing also so this drive has most important advantage of this drive is this drive has higher efficiency now as we talk about higher efficiency why it has because because slip power whatever the slip power is there is fed back to the source fed back to the source that means we are talking about pr is fed back to the source now whenever the power is fed back to the source then it is very it will have higher efficiency because we are not wasting the power see if you see in rotor resistance controlled control there we are wasting the power in what resistors so we are using their resistors external resistors there we are wasting the power but in this drive if you see we are not wasting the power we are feeding back to the ac source itself yes so we are not wasting the power therefore it will have higher efficiency this is an important point now coming to the ninth point we will be writing some formulas that is nothing but vd1 and vd2 formula what is vd1 and vd2 here you can see vd1 is for the the diode bridge vd2 for the inverter side control rectify which is working as inverter so vd1 formula we can write it as 3 root 6 by pi s v by n s is the slip v n i will discuss and i will tell you what is that now again here 3 root 6 by pi vd2 v by m cos alpha okay now vd2 as i said before vd2 can be controlled by what the firing angle firing angle is something but this one so that's why i said vd2 can be controlled by this firing angle okay so here all these things you have to mention what is all these things in this now this in alpha is something but what inverter firing angle then n and m is there right so n and m let me just discuss so n is nothing but the stator to rotor ratio uh, not ratio the turns stator to rotor turns 
टर्न्स रेशियो ऑफ मोटर ओके देन एम एम इज नथिंग बट सो साइड टू कन्वर्टर साइड टर्न्स रेशियो नो वॉट इज दिस एक्चुअली ऑफ वॉट ट्रांसफॉर्मर नो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व वी हैड सीन वन ट्रांसफॉर्मर ओवर देयर वी ऑब्जर्व हियर दिस थिंग इफ यू सी हियर वन ट्रांसफॉर्मर इज देयर दैट इज दैट इज वॉट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट सो साइड इज नथिंग बट द ए सी सप्लाई सोर्स इज देयर कन्वर्टर साइड मीन्स दिस पार्ट ओके दैट मीन्स द कन्वर्टर पार्ट इन्वर्टर पार्ट ओके दैट रेशियो वी आर सी एम इज टू वन दे आर गिवन राइट सो दैट्स वॉट वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एम So this is related to the transformer. N is related to the uh, motor. Okay. So let tenth point. So when we neglect V V D one and V D two, summation will be equal to zero. When we neglect the drop across the inductor. So when we are neglecting the drop across this inductor L D. So we can say that V D one plus V D two will be equal to zero. okay next next point so here no in next point here itself vd1 and vd2 i can just put it over here so what i'll do i'll add this equation and just write it in the form here so vd1 it's something but 3 root 6 by pi sv by n plus vd2 is nothing but this one 3 root 6 by pi v by m cos alpha is equal to 0 from this what all things are common 3 root 6 pi v is common so 3 root 6 by pi into v i'll take it outside what is left out s by n plus what else is there cos alpha by m is equal to 0 now here what will happen so when i take this part to the right side here it is multiplication right when i take this part to the right side what will happen it will get cancelled that means it will zero into this thing it will be zero itself so what is left out s by n plus cos alpha by m is equal to zero so from this can i get the value of s so s will be equal to see shift this part to the right side this holds to the right side so it will be minus n by m cos alpha okay i hope you got it minus because here plus is there it will go that side it will become minus cos alpha by m then n we can take it to the that side it will come on the numerator part that's why it is minus n by m cos alpha here you have to remember it should be greater than minus a cos alpha okay where a a is nothing but the n by m that is nothing but the n by m ratio we have discussed what is n and what is m already okay so it should be greater than minus a cos alpha and one more thing this alpha the inverter uh, the firing angle is restricted to 165 degree why because for the safe commutation purpose of inverter thy thyristor okay so where we are using thyristors right so for safe commutation purpose we are using commutation purpose means basically for switching of the thyristors okay so that purpose we are using alpha till 165 degree so alpha can be changed from 90 to 165 degree for the safe commutation purpose and one more thing you can just add this transformer part here you can see observe here this transformer side is to be used to match the voltages of vd1 and this vd2 okay so let us uh, now discuss about the application purpose also so why we are where we are using this so this drive can be used in what medium and high power application okay high power application up to 10 megawatt okay for example we can take fan pump drives 
this all things we can use strip drive because of high efficiency and low cost we can apply this all these things okay because this drive is having what high efficiency as well as low cost so we can go for the medium and high power application for pump and uh, pump drives and fan as well so this is the entire scenario of a static strabius drive